So if you're trying to make a game from scratch at the low level and are looking for a nice quick and dirty way of adding, you know, a bunch of visual interest and movement to your game, but you don't want to go spend five years getting a PhD in pixel art, I would like to introduce you to one of my, one of my very good friends, the particle system. Oh, that's a good particle effect. All these particle effects that you see here right now, they stem from a really dead simple system that I'm going to show you in this vid. I'll give you all the source code so you can just, you know, yoinky spoinky for yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then, and I'll give you just a bunch of examples of me using the system to make this this thing, all these things, yeah. But before we dive into that, let me walk you through uh, point number one. Why? Big big elephant in the room. Why would you even want particle effects to begin with? They on the surface kind of seem like a a quote unquote polish thing, right? You know, we're just sitting here prototyping out gameplay and trying to get shit actually working. It kind of seems like the last thing on your mind, right? I mean, it, it, it usually is for me, honestly. But sometimes, like in the case of ordering this can, it's really useful just co for communicating visually what's happening. So I see it as like another tool in the tool belt of, you know, all these things that we can deploy to give feedback on an action in the game. Another way I use it is sometimes I just use it to hide the jank. Like, for example, these edges used to be like really, really straight. So I'm like, hey, let me like just throw a particle effect in there and try and like mask the edge of the thing. And I ended up creating this absolute masterpiece. One of my best particles that I've done so far. Like it looks like the void is coming in and just like nibbling at the edges of the world. When in reality, all that's actually going on here, it'll be very apparent if we change this to white. It's just a bunch of tiny little squares getting spawned in. <laughs> I see particles as another tool in the tool belt of uh, being able to pull off gameplay or extra polish, whatever you really want to call it, man. Sometimes it has a gameplay purpose, like, you know, in, in the case of the watering can, right? Sometimes it's just visual. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. Like this slime thing, the, the, the particles just add some juiciness to things and communicate feedback. So sometimes it's kind of hard to tell when a particle effect is needed and when it isn't. I kind of just say fuck it. And when I'm bored, I'll throw in some particles and it'll just be a little bit of fun, you know? All right. So now they know what they're useful for. Let me give you a quick rundown of the source code for this entire system. And then after that, I'm going to give you some concrete examples of how to actually use the system to generate particle effects. Before we get stuck into that though, if you would like to join a community with myself and a bunch of other dudes sitting here making games, then check out the link in the description and you can uh, go see what it's all about. What's up guys? <laughs> now back to the rest of the vid for the source code in this particle system. I'm an Odin. If you don't know what that is, you can kind of think of it as like a modern replacement to see. Basically less thinking about dumb shit and more thinking about gameplay. Mm. And now for the whole particle system. It's actually stupidly simple. The whole thing is 124 lines of code, but it's designed to be malleable as fuck. Meaning when I'm sitting here making a game and I, I'm trying to make a particle effect, but the current system does like something lacking and I want to add something in. For example, maybe I want to add in a third dimension and add a little bit of height to the particles. That's what I did the other day. I changed this from a VEC2 to a VEC3 and I added in this bounce factor. Give me that bounce. So it's one of these classic systems I have where it's like a thing that I use, but also kind of adjust on the fly, not a, you know, package or library that's rigid that I interface with. You can see at the top here, the package is main. It's, it's supposed to just go in the main game package, right? So here's a rough outline. We have a struct of the particle and then just a very simple array of particles. This guy is circular. What that means is whenever we're creating a particle, once we hit the end of the array, then we are just going to wrap back around to zero. And this works because, you know, whenever I'm creating a particle, there's like a concept of a lifetime always. Otherwise, it would hang around and we would just run out of memory, right? <laughs> so if we're making a particle and the data that we've just gotten is valid, it means that like we're kind of overriding the particles and we have a little bit too much. So at that point, you know, I would double the buffer size or, you know, uh, get good. And then the entire system is just driven by this particle update and render, which does exactly what it says in the tin. We got a nice little physics system movement thing in here. And then, yeah, just a lifetime there. 
and then we are rendering just with a draw rect, nice and simple. By the way, if you don't have a library yet that you're using to draw stuff, or you have one, but you're looking for a new one that doesn't make you want to die, I'll give you something you can use at the end of the video so you don't have to worry about graphics programming and you can just focus entirely on gameplay. Okay, so now that you've got your epic new particle system, you know, you're, you're sitting here, you're excited, you're pumped. You're sitting there wondering, man, can, can things really be that simple? How do we use this beautiful new system to make some lovely looking particle effects? Uh, let's look at this void edge to kick things off since it's nice and cool. By the way, I need ideas for what to do next. So chuck a comment down below and let me know what you like to see. Uh, also, if there's any annoying problems that you're tackling right now, let me know what they are and maybe I will also be able to help with that. Who knows? So this just gets run every single frame. We are sitting inside this uh, game draw function, I guess. The first thing I'm trying to do is like trying to figure out what actually spawned them. I'll save you the boring details of this. You know, for all of the chunks that we could have that I would just go find the edges and then spawn a bunch of particle effects along them, right? How that math looks like is it's like, yo, all right, we're just kind of like grabbing a line along here and then dividing it up into little steps. We've got a step length of 5.0 and then we're just gonna go through and run these particle effects. So the way that this is actually getting fired, because if we were to just run this every single frame, it would get hairy pretty quick. Uh, for example, if I turn this off and just make this true, this will run every single frame. And you know, obviously we're gonna have a metric fuckload of particles and we're hitting that warning, overriding particles, increase buffer size, please. Or just don't be a fucking idiot like what I've just done, right? Now, the reason that this log is pretty decent is that it just looks that when we're creating a particle, if the particle that we've just gotten here is already valid, meaning its lifetime isn't up and it hasn't been destroyed yet, then we're gonna like override it, right? At that point, yeah, either just double the buffer size or figure out how to scale back the particle effect a little bit to be a bit more performant. So what I've done here is I've got this function called run every seconds. And what this basically is, is it's just an inline timer, right? An inline timer based off some kind of hash that you put in here that has to be unique. So this will just run every one second. And how it actually does that, we're well, getting a little bit beyond the scope of the particle thing at this point, but uh, it's just a hash table with that unique key that I was talking about in here. And then it just uses that to persist state across the frame. And as soon as this stops getting cold, this whole hash storage utility thing will just get destroyed with the clear stale over here. So this is just something that I'm calling every frame. It's just like a general kind of like, I don't even know what to call it, like immediate mode kind of data storage thing based off of just a key. Well, the end result here is that this will be true every every second or so, you know, or we could change it to two seconds or whatever, right? That's how this gets throttled and fired every second. And then we've got the particle create in here, which returns the particle that we can do stuff with. So I'm adding the physics flag in here. Now, all particles, they just have a position, velocity, and acceleration. And inside here, I've just got some flags for other stuff. It's literally just physics right now. I haven't added anything in. That's just a simple little physics system. The entire thing is just kind of sitting here, I guess. And that's what actually gives the particle movement. You may be wondering why this is a VEC 3. It's a 2D game. I'll dive into that in a little bit. But for now, yeah, just literally spawning it in the correct position along the line, adding a little bit of randomization. And really the key here is that it fades in and it fades out. So fade in percent is 0.3, fade out percent is 0.2. So 0 0.3 is 30% of like the total lifetime of the particle. So that means for the first 30% of its lifetime, it'll be fading in. And I have that kind of just set down here. That's what drives the whole thing. And then, you know, vice versa for the fade out. That's what makes it a little bit smoother. It's always handy having that on because if I didn't have that on, it would just kind of look a little bit jarring and it would just kind of pop in and out of existence. You can see that happening there, right? And then I've also got a size here. So it's randomizing the size from two to five. That's how I kind of optimize this specific particle effect a little bit. I just made it like way chunkier. Whereas if I had this as a size of maybe like just one, then I would need to spawn in way more particles for this to actually look decent, right? Really is as simple as that. That is a nice little particle effect for the edge void. Next up, uh, let's take a look at the watering can. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, look right here, watering particle effect. So this guy's a little bit different because it's happening on click, right? So it means it's just gonna fire one time and instead of running every frame, we're not running into the problem of having to throttle it back and like have a timer on it. It's just a one-time event. So I'm making a loop here and basically just spawning in 10 of these little water droplet particles. 
So this is where that third dimension actually comes in. I am a big fan of actually having VEC 3s on everything because then you can use the Z, that third dimension, to literally denote like height in the world. And the way that gets rendered is when you're drawing, you take the normal, you know, top down X, Y, and then you just plus the Y with the Z. And then it kind of gives it like a little bit of a height offset. That combined with any kind of like gravity really does wonders. So I've just got, you know, gravity being applied as a constant acceleration to the Z here. And when it goes, you know, less than zero, you know, we've, we've hit the ground and it'll just kind of zero out and stay there. So we can see that in action with the watering can over here. You can see how it's uh, it's just kind of slowly kind of falling in, spawning up at a height of 10 and then falling down based on the gravity. We could accentuate that by just kind of knocking the gravity down a little bit. And yeah, you can see that guy just kind of slowly drifting down, right? That's another nice little particle. Um, just spawning a bunch of these guys in randomly. The only kind of meaningful thing here, I guess, is like the color itself being that nice blue color and then I'm randomizing it a tiny little bit. And that's the entire effect. Just a little bit of physics. So now the slime, kind of the same. As you can see in here, I have this slime square particles function because I used it a couple times. Like when it's doing a jump or when it's getting hit. Yeah, when it's getting into the stun state, it's just getting whacked. Or you know, when it's just landing. It'll just squirt some particles out. So yeah, this is just a one-time event. We're just spawning in 15 of them. And if we've got like a hit direction, I'll add in like a little bit of velocity in the direction that we got hit. Some Something good here, I guess, is the friction. Could probably cover that. Uh, this is really helpful for giving things movement, but making sure that they don't move forever. So if we turn this off, you can see the effect of this is we're just kind of picking a random direction for these particles to fly in. You can see they're just kind of going ham like that, right? <laughs> it's a lot of velocity. But if we add in this guy, friction, it'll just make it way more subtle. He's just jumping off into the void by Mr. Slime. And how that's being achieved is we're just taking this friction and we're taking the velocity and times it by like the negative that, adding that into the acceleration. And that is a nice scuffed poor man's friction. Does the job, you just drive it with this constant here and uh, kind of get it feeling however you want. Now, this entire system is kind of useless if you don't have a good foundation to add it on top of. So you can watch this video next and that'll give you kind of everything that you need. Be able to make all the entities, draw stuff to the screen, all that kind of good stuff. Enjoy.